Something. You're now, you're now, you're now tuned into the most unpredictable podcast on the World Wide Web. It's about to shut it. Shut it. You are locked in. Yeah. You know what it is. Pour up a glass of wine, ladies. Let the Henny flow, fellas. And get ready to and get ready to try to fuck on the rock the rock. It's Karen Hill live on Said Loud Radio on your favorite internet platform streaming live. It is another episode of Say It Loud. What up, y'all? Thank you for checking me out. Um, so I'm going to say this because I'm so excited to have you here. I really am. So I've been following, se- is it sexual essentials or sex essentials? Sexual essentials. I've been following sexual essentials. I don't know how long, but a very long time. And I was like, oh my God, I got to get her on the show. She needs to be here. So thank you so much for joining me today on Save Loud and taking a hot seat. No I appreciate it. Can you tell you all our listeners? Me? Of course. Can you tell all our listeners um, who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So my name is Samaya. I'm the owner of Sexual Essentials. And what I do or what I classify myself as is I'm a hands-on sexual educator. So what that means is that I teach people how to have sex, but much more in depth is hands-on. So you don't get to just get my top 10 tips for this or top 10 tips for that. Um, You don't just have to sit in a class and listen to me lecture. I put that ass to work. (laughs) <laughs> so you actually have to do it. So I teach classes, um, a mouth master class where I teach women how to give oral pleasure. Um, I teach a dick writing class. Um, I think that one's self-explanatory, right? Yes. Um, I teach a, a masturbation and squirting class, foreplay, vaginal orgasms, all of that. Um, and I have a Patreon where I also teach like other topics that don't take me as long as it takes me to teach the bigger ones. Right. Um, and I break those up into mini segments. So on there, I teach men how to give, um, you know, cunnilingus for radio's purposes, right? <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's loud. You can say whatever fuck you want here. <laughs> we don't care. Uh, so men coming to learn how to eat pussy, you know, yeah. you know, sex. How do you start sex toys? How do you start with kinks? What if you want to have a threesome? What if you want to have one? What if it turns you on, but you don't know if you really want to actually have like anything, all things sex. I provide the essentials to make it happen and to basically help people create the sex life that they want. That's what I I do. I think that's so amazing. And I think there's a lot of people listening going, I don't need that. I don't think I need that. And I I wanted to start there because I feel like everybody, I swear everybody I meet know what the fuck they doing. I'm the only person who don't know what I'm doing or feels like I could be better. I feel that for a lot of people that know what they're doing, there's still a lot of women faking orgasms and a lot of women that are mothers that have never even had an orgasm before. So until people are ready to look in the mirror and just be honest and say, you know what, I enjoy our sex, but I know this is not, we have not accomplished what it's meant for, then it's going to stay subpar because you're what afraid as an adult of your partner and telling them that you didn't come. Right. Or, or, you know, well, like, what, what, it, what is it? What is we it? We can go back a step because I think for me, and it's, I don't know about other women, but I feel like there's a lot of women that grow, that have grown up with this, like, you know, like almost with that theory that like women shouldn't enjoy sex too much. You know what I mean? Or we shouldn't be vocal. So another reason I wanted you here is really to just empower both men and women, because we got a lot of men listeners, but really empower both people to not be at the limit where mentally you're just so stuck in your way. You know what I, have you, have you ever seen that movie Wreck-It Ralph? Yes. The cartoon movie. So in Wreck-It Ralph, whatever the little girl, the little glitch. Yeah. You know how she thought that it was her, it was something wrong with her and she had to be this way. And what she found out was she was the star of the game. Right. That's what it's like with sex. Women think they're supposed to do less. And you know what? You know who's telling us who shaped that women are less when it comes to sex? The people that are intimidated and can't control it and don't understand it the most. And in the past, that has been men, you know, um, misogyny you know and so just like that game when women start uncovering what the pussy is really made for and how to work it oh she starts whooping ass and she's winning the game (laughs) and she's winning the game of sex 
You know what right. I mean? She's really the star of it. But when you don't know who you are and right. for us, when you don't know about your pussy, then guess what? Anybody can use your pussy against you because you don't even understand what you're working with over there. Right. And so and women I, always I, think that like sex is dictated by men when really it is definitely the other way around. It's just they don't know how to teach you that. So now that there's a woman here doing it, let me teach you. And right. I know so many women sit there, lay on their back, having sex and trying to sneak their vibrator out when he going to get in the shower. Like, I know you tired of doing it. Like, what do you what do you have to lose just even coming to one of my classes and just hearing what I have to say? If you don't like it. You could block me. You could talk crap. Like you could do so many other things. But guess what? That doesn't happen. You just end up signing up for another course and another course. And oh, you, you know what it is too. No one <laughs> teaches us about sex. No one mm-hmm. teaches us. Who's it? You're the. You know. You don't really learn. You, you. I don't know about any. I don't know where everybody else learned, but I know. Corn hub and your friends. Yeah, is your mother telling you not to do it? And that was pretty much it. Right. You don't want to get pregnant. Don't have sex. And then it was your your friends and you whisper in at school and things like that until you kind of get in those situations where you're doing it. And at that point, still, there's no real healthy discussion or education around it. Absolutely not. In sex ed, they just teach you how to put a condom on a banana. Um, don't get pregnant and that you have a period. And then everybody says, ew. And then that's the end of it. Right. Nobody teaches you, oh, okay, sex isn't over. Like they teach you about the male orgasm because the orgasm for them is needed to procreate. Right. But our our orgasm scientifically, when you when it comes to reproduction, the world sees it as it doesn't matter because it doesn't create life. Right. Like Yeah. So there's a lot of women walking around who have never had an orgasm. It's women that's walking around that got bombs on them and they don't even know. They got some bomb ass. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Okay. Let's get back on track. No, it's no, no, no. Go, ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I totally agree. I really feel like there's and a lot of women. Don't, that- I don't know. But yeah, it's a lot of women that have never had an orgasm. And there's someone out here who's listening and they're like, okay, well, I think I have. I'm not sure. How do you know if you've had an orgasm? And I tell people all the time, if I asked you. Have you taken a shit on yourself? Even if you didn't know, you would know. Right, 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 right. You took a shit on yourself. Yes. You know if you did. Um, That's exactly how an orgasm feels. It is one of them things like, oh, shit. Oh. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, my God. When I think about that, that's so sad, though. Because I'm like, yeah. It's very sad. That's sad. Well, for those of you that are listening that are now have piqued your interest, um, we want to create a healthy space. So you definitely need to follow her and take a class. I actually, the next time in New York, I am actually going to come to a class um, because I'm a, I'm a fan. And I feel like it's not even just about learning how to have sex it's, or learning your body. It's also about being confident. And the more you know about your own body, the more confident you're going to feel. And the more confident you feel in yourself, the better your sex is going to be regardless. Absolutely. So. Um, for me, it's building that confidence of being there and knowing what you're doing and not being a, in a situation as a woman where you're waiting for someone to do it for you, but you are capable of reaching that climactic orgasm by yourself if you have to. Absolutely. And I, I love it what you said about confidence. I think that some of that is really the part because a lot of women say they're shy and they don't know how to be bold, but then you give them a glass of Moscato and then they make the stallion in like two <laughs> seconds. So it's like, you know what to do. You just don't have the confidence to do it. So pack up that bullshit and put it in your pocket. I don't want to hear right. that. Like, stop. Yeah. You know how to I, do it when you want to. Yeah. I also think um, it's really important for your classes to not just be about women, but to be about men as well. We have a lot of men listeners and I love them. I love my dudes because they take very good care of me, but I got to tell you something about men. Every man swear up and down he know what he doing. He they sw- I've never met a man in the world ever that say he don't know what he doing. That say he don't know what he doing. And there's a lot of times that us women are laying there and he down there and we just like, you know what? Just give me the remote. Fuck it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel that the sexiest thing that I that I've learned as I got older, the type of men that I'm attracted to um and ladies, pick this up. Like, this is how you find big dick. Not not just big energy, but good dick energy. 
you know, we need more than big dick energy these days. We need good dick. Because it'd be a lot of y'all walking around with these sausages that don't know where the hell to put it and how to use it. Right. So, and more than big dicks. We need good dick. Right. Um, Healthy dick. dick. Yeah, healthy. Ooh, that sounds girthy as hell. Yeah, healthy dick. I want good, <laughs> healthy dick. Like, good, good, good girthy. girthy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm serious. The next man I meet, I'm saging that motherfucker. We starting fresh. You need good and girthy. So <laughs> I, I feel like um, something that, that really attracts me to a man is a man that is not bragging on his dick, but the first thing he asked me was, how do you like this and how do you like that? And it tells me that you understand who's really in charge of this show. Like you take care of me and this is going to take care of you. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like men should, are. I feel like men are very selfish because, and not all men, of course, but overall men are selfish as, as if they're not going to come. You know, you're going to come. Right. You know it. Right. And you know, sometimes that she doesn't. And, and, and yeah, I just, I don't understand that. So I, even if a man tells me like, oh, I'll do this to you, it's an instant turn off to me. That's just, that's some high school shit to me. Girl, right. I tear that ass up. Like, what? <laughs> How old are we? <laughs> How you gonna do that? Hey, sir, stop. Or I, what you do for one woman, woman and might have worked with her may not necessarily work with every other woman. Absolutely. Absolutely. That part too. But so that conversation needs to be had because that other woman might have made you feel like, you know what? I got this. I don't need to know anything else. And then you meet me <laughs> and it's like, that's not cutting it. And it's not one woman against the other. It's just that we have different interests and our bodies are different and what we need is different. Um, so how did you start Sexual Essentials? So um, originally I was just looking for an outlet for, um, I've always been a sexual person, like to, I like to talk about it, understand it and share it with others. Cause I just always, th I always ran into somebody who's like, oh, I didn't know that. So I'm just teaching them stuff that I know. Um, but overall I was looking for a, a outlet um, to talk about this stuff. So I was like, oh, I'll just start a blog, you know, and then boom. Right. But then I was like, well, if I start a blog, there's a lot of parts with sex and there are toys out there and, you know, sex stores sell everything, even though all that shit ain't useful. So I'm going to make a store that way I can only put the stuff in there that actually makes people come right. um, in there, like 99.9% .9 versus just selling anybody anything. And then I was like, well, damn, it's other people that got stories that I don't have. So I probably need to, you know, do interviews and stuff too. And I was like, okay, and then I'll start the Instagram page so people can keep up. And then I was like, wait, you know what? I just need to teach people how to say, have sex. Everybody else are already writing about sex. So I was right. like, I can do classes. But I was like, if I stand in the front and talk about sucking dick, how are they really going to get better at sucking some dick? I said, you know what? I'm going to give them a dick. Fuck it. If you come to my class, I'm going to give you a dildo. You're going to have to suck it so I can really show you how to suck yeah. dick. And we're going to all pull out. And it just, it just went downhill. And I was like, I need to provide a place for people to learn how to have sex. Like, I've had mothers bring their, their, their nice. daughter when they found out she was sexually active and enrolled her in every single one of my classes, where it's like, if you're going to do it, right. do it right. Because think right. about how many people have, how many people we wouldn't have slept with if we knew what we knew now. Right. Like you, right. there are so many signs beforehand that this is not going to give you what you want, but we don't know anything about sex. We're depending on somebody else to provide pleasure for us. Right. And so, you know, we fail anyway. So I just, I want it to be a one-stop shop to learn everything that you need. Even if I don't dive into some topics, I will hit on it and then direct you to the next place that you need to go to. But as far as the essentials of sex, sexual essentials provides it, you know, um, along with um, vaginal health. I realized a lot of women were not popping the pussy to the best of their ability because they were worried about how they smell, you know, oh. and being misinformed and buying summer's eve and shit like that that will give you a yeast infection right. um, so i went to a black manufacturer and you know now i have yoni oil and fem wash Yay, i'm gonna order some girl it's amazing and, i'm gonna order some you know I, can't I, wait. Just, I just i don't know i just i feel like it's just the real world thing 
the thing that you just was missing out of sex. And- no, I think it's great. I think what you're doing is amazing because, like I said, especially as a woman of color, you know what I mean? To ha- to be able to make the connection and to create a space for both men and women to be like, you know what? I want to learn how to do this and I want to be more confident and I want to be better. I want to be better at sex. I want to enjoy it more. Or just even have their questions answered by someone that they're comfortable, that like looks like me and feels like me and thinks like me. Because there's other places you could go and you're like, damn, I don't know if I want to ask this question question or is this person looking down on me you know what I mean here I am a mother or here I am at 40 you you know and so really creating a space where it's just like nah it's cool just ask me what you need to ask me let me show you here hold this dildo I'm gonna hold this dildo. we're gonna do this and by the time you leave here you're gonna feel a lot better about what it is that you're doing equipped you know a lot of people think that um telling kids not to have sex and worry about this worry about that if they understood what sex was supposed to feel like and how to make it happen i assure you they would be waiting a little longer because it would be clear when you talk to other people that they they don't know what they're talking about but we send these kids out here without being informed and then they make all these bad decisions because they were just looking for the thing that you've been hiding from them saying you know if if you tell a kid don't do this don't do this Cause they like, oh, this shit must be dope. Then I got to try this, <laughs> I, and so they're looking for it and they're searching and they're just looking for where's that thing I saw loving basketball or where's that you know like right. sex scenes in these movies. Where, where's that? And they're searching for it, but we haven't provided them any information about what they should be looking for sexually, you know, right. or how that should feel how it should look and how to do it yourself first. Because if you get with anybody, they can know how to do a lot of things with the people in the past. But if you can't direct them on how to get to the destination you want them to be at, how are they going to get there? All right. So I got a question for you as a male or female, because we have a lot of listeners of both. When would one, when would a person know like they need a sex coach? When do you think, like, what are some of the red flags? Like if you feel this way, duh, you need to take my class. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, I think that, ironically, sometimes it's what are the green lights that tell you that you need a sex coach. It's not just because something is wrong. Sometimes it's because you guys have reached either a new level or you want to try something different or you just, it's like a car. Life, relationship, sex, all of it is like a car. You have to go get it maintenance. You have to go get oil changes. You have to get the tires changed. You have to take care of it if you want it to keep running smoothly. And if you plan on being with anybody for a long period of time, Sex has a lot of things and you only know what you know. Right. So you are responsible for figuring out, is there more that you want to know? If so, go get a sex coach so you can explore more things healthy in a healthy way, in a way that um, is without regret, you know, in a way that is properly informed. Like you don't want to try tying up and bondage and you hurt someone because you don't know what you're doing Um, Mm -hmm. or just to, refine that spark sometimes it's like there are so many women that used to love doing stuff sexually and then they have kids and they get into this life of responsibility and yeah they still like it but they don't love it the same way they used to when they were young and carefree and going to a sex coach can help you make your pleasure a priority like you hire an accountant to do your taxes right you hire someone to take care of your yard. You hire someone to take care um, of your kids. Your car. <laughs> Hell, your kids. But you don't hire anyone to take care of you sexually. And then you wonder why you can't do it all as if you're super. Warm. Right. Or where, why that part of your life is lacking. And you, you know what I mean? But we don't put that and same energy and that don't. work into it. And you don't know why. And because you are worried about, oh, if we need to got a sex coach, that means that our sex is bad. But people that are getting help with their sex life have the best sex lives because it's open, it's honest, it's vulnerable. And what really makes you superwoman or superman is getting the assistance you need to do it all. You can do it all, just not by yourself. You know, um, everything is not your ministry. Okay, like right, right. Let the professionals do the do what they do. Yeah, let the professionals do what they do, and you be a great teacher. Take a load off. Just listen for once and see where it takes you. You only know what you know. You don't know anything else outside of that, and we forget that we don't know everything. Right. You know? I definitely agree with that. Um, couples that have children, it changes the sex in their sex lives, 
And at that point, you do need to make that a priority, like that intimacy, a, a priority in your life. And if it means, again, like you said, if it means that like, okay, every Tuesday night, we got to go do leave the house or get a babysitter or go on a date so that we could have that time together, then that's it. Or let me show, or let's take this class together. Then that's part of the work, you know? Um, I definitely agree. But I feel like there's something that's missing. A lot of people think that the sex after marriage is just different because of those two and them having a child and the life changing. But mostly a lot of the sex after a child is different because she is different and mm -hmm. she doesn't even. It, she don't even know who she it, is sometimes. After sometimes, that. Yes. But but take me, for example. So I have a three year old son. Beautiful. Huge eats a lot. Great. But he tore my pussy apart. You know, having a child, I had no sex drive afterwards. I had baby powder pussy that mm -hmm. was dry. I was like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to have sex for the closeness, but I didn't want to have sex. I wasn't horny. I felt nothing. Right. And it, it felt like even touching down there, like it just was almost desensitized in a way. And um, what I realized is it didn't matter how many practices you do with someone else to try to make a moment intimate. We have to take care of the female body first to do that. And mm -hmm. so um, that's honestly where the class masturbation and squirting one-on-one was born from. It was born from, those are all the things that I did to get my pussy back after I had my child. That's um, so crazy. I, I just, it's I felt crazy. like people weren't going to buy a class that was called, oh, pussy after postpartum like you know because no, everybody will think that it has to do should have a class called pussy after postpartum so <laughs> I, I had the opposite effect i have i have three children my youngest is 11 and um when i had my son i had the total opposite i was horny i wanted to have sex and i felt like my partner did not satisfy me and i thought i thought there was something wrong with me i was like it must be all this because it was my first son so i was like maybe i just got all this extra testosterone in my body <laughs> like why because i didn't feel like that after i had my daughters um but after i had my son i was like maybe it's because i'm 30 like maybe <laughs> when you get in your 30s like think of it i heard the pussy change when you turn yes, 30. I'm yes, so for real. i have my daughter Daughters at younger ages in my, it, my I was a teenager when I had my oldest daughter and my other daughter I was in my 20s and then I hit my 30s and I just was not sad I was like you you not I don't know if it's the baby the testosterone or what but you're not cutting it like you know this is this is not if I got to be stuck with this for the rest of life we got some problem you know and my and it just changed for me where I did not feel like that prior to having my son that, and honestly, that's something to be super grateful for because a lot of women are younger and then they knew what they felt like sexually before and then they have a child and they feel that decline because of all the hormonal changes. Um, but I, I refuse to sell a class called Pussy After Postpartum because I, what I realized is that the masturbation and squirting class, it all teaches the same thing. And right. so when people listen to me talk and if they read the descriptions, they'll figure out, okay, this will, I put it in if this is the answer to your sex drive after, but you know, because otherwise you're selling the same thing twice. Right. Just keeping up with your sexuality helps you do more than one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just postpartum care. It's master. The masturbation and squirting class is a great class for women who've never had an orgasm before. It's a great class for people who don't know how to masturbate. If you need to know how to have longer orgasms, um, harder orgasms, stronger ones, more frequent, if you're trying to switch it up and find a new way to do this or that, um, if you want to learn how to squirt, it does all those things and helps you after postpartum. So it was just like, this is just an all inclusive class yeah. you know? I definitely think that's worth it like like you said it could be for postpartum but it could be for someone who's just like I want to learn how to squirt I've heard oh, it absolutely because oh. I feel like that's a big thing women talk about too it's like I've never squirted it before and it's just like how do I get there you know what I mean and then we come and then or women become very reliant on having a partner to do it versus being able to masturbate and squirt on their own um, I definitely feel like it's easier for people to squirt during sex when they know how to maneuver it by themselves first. I, I feel like that about anything sexually. Right. Um, but I also think that the world has a fixation on this idea of squirting because women have faked orgasms for so long that men, I think, 
want a visual representation right. that you're not I mean, so I know it's real <laughs> but that's the thing women can squirt and they didn't have an orgasm and so there is no way to tell when a woman is faking all you can do is be thorough if you're thorough and you are open to being critiqued and open to her suggestions she may trust you enough to tell you the truth that she did not come if you're not available for someone like if you're not going to listen to her she's just going to fake it with you so if you don't if you're not really approachable you'll never know she'll never tell you the truth and she won't have to but i do encourage you ladies don't be faking don't be faking (laughs) because how can anybody change anything if you're telling them that what they're doing is the answer i don't think women should be faking for that reason but i also feel like if you're in a relationship with someone and you plan on being there and that being a healthy relationship then faking sex faking faking orgasm is going to eventually tap into some other part of your relationship Mm -hmm. it's not you know what i mean because you're not you're not fully satisfied so at some point it's going to start creeping into other areas of your life and if that's the person you want to be with and that's your partner you need to be able to communicate about that absolutely that's my end up with blue pussy (laughs) <laughs> it's like blue balls. You don't want to do that. So stop faking so we can get to the bottom of it. So what are some things that the men need to know? Um, I think men need to learn how to eat pussy. That's one. Um, they do you have a class for that? Yeah, it's on my Patreon. My Patreon is, um, there are two options. So you can do, um, well, forget that. I don't feel like explaining it all. Look here, there's go to Patreon. my Patreon. <laughs> um, if you go to the highest tier, you get everything, right? Yeah. Um, anyways, I do classes in there. Classes that don't take me an hour, like things that I can teach in 15 or 20 minutes. And I have over 40 something classes in there about all different types of things to learn how to do a lot of different stuff. And I have two pussy eating. Uh, it's a two part class to teach men how to eat pussy. And um, I definitely put that in there. Um, because they'd be down there and slashing their tongue around like <laughs> oh it's God. a pig, like it's a pig trough or something. And it's just like, what is this? Well, then, in their defense, how are they supposed to learn how to do this? Calling me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> guys like, I like, I, I know how, what to do. And you're just looking at, you're just sitting there like, you no, no. If you listening to this, and, and you know what, and men feel like they're doing it right because also some women don't know how to correct them. But I feel like even I would rather take a sex class and find out that I knew everything, right? Than to not take it and then just be wondering, damn, should I have taken that class? Yeah, you know, like it's always something that you can learn. But no, I, I break it down absolutely. I, I put it out there. All right, so ladies and gentlemen that are listening, I implore you to um, Valentine's Day is coming. Patreon is there. Y'all might buy a class, gift a class to somebody. You know what I mean? We don't know how to start conversations. It might be a good way to start a conversation and be like, you know what? Let's take this class together. Let I got you. I gifted you, you know, a class to so-and-so. This is going to change your life because I do feel like people need to have these conversations. And when it comes to both egos, both men and women, we're not very open sometimes to being critiqued. No, it is honestly, it's, we have to learn how to talk to each other out of love and take the ego out of it. And also just accepting that whomever you're talking to is human. So if it hurts their feelings, that's normal. And we, we have to learn to to deal with these human emotions that, you know, the person who's telling you something is going through and the person hearing it is going through. Be more understanding and stop trying to be perfection. Stop trying, like, I feel like everybody's trying to be like, look a certain way and be a certain way versus just telling the truth. A lot of people yeah. thinking the exact same shit, but y'all trying to hold up this like facade as if you right. have it together as if your marriage is perfect, your boyfriend, girlfriend relationship is perfect or that you just get all the, like, you know what you're doing. Like, right. I always meet people and it's like, I be seeing these little girls walking around rapping WAP and this my WAP. And I'm like, little girl, wait till you get to like 40. You really have the WAPs. (laughs) Wait wait till, (laughs) because now now that I'm grown, I mean, I'm grown, grown, you know, but now that I'm grown, I'm like that. When I was 19 and 20, I didn't know shit. You really ain't have it like that. No. You had had quick, your your pussy was quick. It didn't take long to start up, but you really wasn't at its top tier. No. Like, so you get to 30 and 40 now, we unlock the new level. See, that's primed. That's primed pussy now. (laughs) 
Yes, it's a season. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, so I, I feel like, like we, we need to get there, though. I feel it's the same with men. I don't know. I, I, maybe I'll have another guy on the show and he could tell me. But I feel like the same thing with men. You can't tell me that what you was doing at 19 and 20 is the same thing you're doing at the, like, sex at 19 and 20 is not the same sex you're having at 35 and 45. It can't possibly be that and then got to learn to stop fucking everything. I love sex just as much as the next person and I wish I could have as much of it as I want it, but I really realize you cannot fuck everybody because if there is no sexual chemistry, the sex going to be whacking you. Can we talk about that, please? Because I have a big hang up with that. Oh, having a lot of sex or? No, I want to have a lot of sex. If it was up to me, I had sex every day if it was up to me. I don't have a partner. And I'm big on uh, chemistry and connection. And I think that people, you know what it is? I feel like in this world, there is, it's a hookup culture, right? Which I feel like if you're doing it safely, it's fine. Even though I don't have any trust that the world is doing it, seeing that we can't even stay in the house for COVID. And I'm not about that life. I mean, uh, I, I respect other people. I'm just not about that life. I, I feel like if you could do it properly and safe, I understand that. Like some people never get married. Some people never settle down or some people are not monogamous. And so they're used to having three partners right. at a time. And they may be with them three partners longer than people have been with one partner, right? That's true. But long story short, I'm saying that I feel like a lot of people are not having the right type of sex. They're just having a lot of it. And it's not shaming anybody, but I'm saying I finally understand that I don't want to fuck everybody. Right. I, I do in my lustiness, but I don't because I don't believe in having bad sex. So right. when people be like, see, she ain't fucking everybody. Oh, trust me. I want to. I'm just not. <laughs> right. Because I know it's not going to be good. And right. I don't think, And I think that this world does hookup culture based off, oh, you look good. I, I want to sleep with you. And that's yeah. great. But in hookup culture, it's like when girls or men start digging too deep, it's like, come on now, we just hear this. And it's like, okay, people are trying to connect with you so the sex can be good to make sure y'all have sexual chemistry. The problem is that afterwards, you know, somebody gets emotional, gets their feelings hurt. And so people start tying that, uh, the part where you get close before you, you know, you actually have sex. They tie it to, oh, that means you're going to want to have a relationship afterwards. So it's like, we're all speaking different languages. Right. Right. Like. You're talking because you want your pussy to wake up from the mental stimulation. <laughs> yeah. They see it as every time we get talking deep, they want to talk more afterwards. So yeah, but see, I'm the kind of chick that my pussy not gonna get wet if we don't do the work. Exactly, but that's like, the thing. People don't know how to hook up. Like if it's you just got to be hooking up. Yeah, like if you took me in a room, I was just like, take off your clothes and heat it, and I'm there. I'd just be like, okay, like, yeah, nothing happened. I will tell you this, though. So, there are people out there that just know how to work the human body and they can do it. Yeah, and I, I think that's I'm great. Like, I'm talking about you walk in a room. Like, I, you have, okay, I'm going to put myself out here for a second. You ever fucked with somebody that you ain't really want to fuck with, but you was like, you know what? I'm going to just try it out. Like, yeah. You were bored. <laughs> When you were bored, like whatever, and they like blew your mind, and you was like, I didn't even like you. Well, I didn't. (laughs) And I don't now, but she do. Yeah. She she do. Yeah. And it's like, how did you do that? And it's like some people that can that know what they're doing, it doesn't matter. They can bring it out of you. But yeah, they can sell it to you. To you. No, no, I totally understand. It's it's happened, but for the most part, for me, I'm more like I need more chemistry than that. Like mm-hmm. my body, you know, I I tell chemistry people all the time, compatibility. Men are physical creatures, women are emotional creatures. You speak to our emotions, you speak to our pussy. It's crazy because the same way though. When some, they are, men are the is, same way. Yeah, I feel like men are the same way too. I just think they're a little bit more visual and a little bit more physical. And that's why when they send you a dick pic, their reaction and your reaction is not necessarily always the same. Absolutely. You, know I mean? you send a guy a, a nude and he's he feeling something different versus when he sends you a dick pic. You know what I mean? You're like, OK, you know what I'm saying? I'll see you later. He's like, oh, look, you know what I mean? It's just they're more physical and women are more like talk dirty to me. And yeah, you know? I, I feel like men are like you're you're good unless you do something wrong. And with women, it's like, you're wrong unless you do something good. And so I feel like when a man is turned off from you, you cannot turn him back on. Like if he good on you, he good on you versus women will say that she good on you and then still- She was never off, yeah, she was never off really. (laughs) 
but men, so like men are pretty strict. Like they may be more lenient in the beginning, but in the back end, they're pretty strict. Yeah, and they're pretty more articulate than women are, in my opinion. It's always women talk more, but I feel like when a man say he done, he's 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 done, and when he's mad, he's mad, and when he ain't yeah. talking to you, he ain't. I think they're a little bit more conscious they're, about what they're thinking and what they're feeling. I don't. I don't think so. I think sometimes with men, we don't listen enough. Because if we oh, listen, we don't. we listen enough, they tell you everything. I'm not hungry. That's it. They're not hungry. You still cook anyway. But they're not hungry. You know, yeah. but if they say to, if they're serious, if they yeah. say if they're serious, it just takes them a long time to sometimes get it out. And women are talking to fill in the gaps and this. And he's just like, OK, until he but finally say something to sit that ass down. But <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what are some things that women need to know about pleasing a man? Um, First of all, you got to want to do it and you have to try to do it, you know, like people talk about pleasing men, but have not asked the men what they want. Um, and also I don't think that women say what they need enough. If you want to please a man, you have to take care of you first because otherwise you're going to end up resenting right. Excuse me, that man or, you know, everything else because you're putting everything else first. I think that women, um, get upset that men keep their social lives and we feel like, well, we stopped doing this and we realize nobody asked you to stop doing that. This you, is true. You didn't take care of you out of your own choice. I think that if a woman is trying to take care of a man, she has to take care of herself. And that means sexually, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things. Um, and also be confident. You are who you are and that person picked you for a reason and you attract what you put out. Right. So if you don't like what you attracted, if you would, if you attracted somebody who takes advantage of you and talks down on you, maybe they thought it was okay because they see you do the same to yourself. Right. Um, or you allowed it. You know, for, for what reason? You have to dig deeper and understand that you attract um, what you put out and take care of yourself. They, they, men love, like the things that you were doing to get him is what he wants you to keep doing. Don't start dropping all your shit to make time to be with him. And it's like, you're not doing none of the stuff that you right. were doing when he was attracted to you. Right, right, for sure. And, and people will use it. Like, they'll let you sit up under them and enjoy it, blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, they they bore with you and you're like, but you let me stop doing this. And they're like, we didn't tell you to stop. We didn't tell you to stop, yeah, right. You don't do this anymore. You don't do that anymore. You just chose to stop doing those things. Um. And then be honest sexually, be nasty, be nasty, find a way to be nasty, find your nasty, um, and be you, be you. It sounds so, it sounds so vague, but it's like when you start taking care of yourself and being yourself and having confidence in that, the things that need to happen are going to happen. You'll speak up and ask him, hey, what can I do better for you? You'll take more initiative in your sex life. You'll be more honest about what you need so that way you can be present sexually. All the things will happen. I you love know? it. I and love it. Asterisk, asterisk, suck some dick. But, you know, <laughs> we already knew that, though. You know what I'm saying? We knew that already. So. Can we just, I'm going to let you go in a second because I can't take up all your time. But can we just talk about sucking dick for a second? One second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the class. Just because I want to class. Um, because I want to see. Um, and it just looks like your classes look like a party, bro. Damn. I don't know if anybody else has ever, I don't know who else follows you, but your classes that you have, and I know you have some classes here in New York and Brooklyn. I don't know where you are everywhere else. And when the world opens back up, everybody please go to the class. Um, take your best friend, take your girlfriend, take your man. And take it's on my... Zoom for now. Like we're doing it online for now, you guys. So but it was pour a glass of wine and sign up for the Zoom. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the next one so that I could be there with my, my listeners. Um, and you bring your dildo. You got to do it too. Even through the Zoom, they be doing, I mailed them their dildo so they can yeah. do it at home. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's that even more exciting. Um, we should do something for Valentine's Day. Um, so, um, but what I want to ask is like the women that are hung up on this sucking dick thing, because there are some women that are like, I don't want to suck dick. I don't know who they are, and I hope it's not none of my friends, but there are some women who are just like, I don't want to suck dick. What are what are the thoughts on that? I have two thoughts. Okay. One thought is that some women are pillow princesses, right? And they actually are attracted to men who are like, have oral fixations that literally are just want to eat 
you out. Like that's all they want to do. I, I, I talked to a guy like that before. Uh, well, I hooked up with a guy like that before. Like he was around just to eat my pussy. He never took off his clothes, anything. And what he wanted, he enjoyed it, but he said, it's very difficult to get the thing I'm looking for from you because I'm used to being that person. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm not used to laying there and relaxing. Right. And he said, it's something so profound about a woman that's willing to accept her pleasure. No, she deserves it and lay back and get and it. And just take it. Yes. And just take it. He said, it's very queen. And most women don't know how to do that. Some women mm. are laying there because they don't know how to do anything else. Right. But there are some women that are proud pillow princesses. Right. Now I found that I, I've, I think I've tapped into my pillow princess in this now since talking to that guy. But I also realized I'm a switch. I want to be the person that's that has the oral fixation and I want to get the pleasure as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's important to know how to do both. But also for the woman that doesn't like sucking dick, I feel like maybe she's never done it right and she hasn't got the reaction and felt the control throbbing in her throat. Like I feel like she hasn't done it right. Because right. when you... When you orally please somebody, it is a whole different type of power. And there's a different type of respect that you have. And not just in that moment, but that person literally respects you because what you were able to make them feel. If you're not able to make them feel anything or change anything in their life, when you put your mouth on them, then odds are you probably aren't doing it right. And once you feel the power that you have in your throat, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's kind of addictive because you're like, okay, I feel real bad bitch right now. Like, what is yes. this? And then you realize, like, you that bitch, go make me a sandwich. Go make me some fried cereal. What you make in your car? Go, go make me some fried cereal right now. It's and very like, wow. Yeah. So I feel like those are the two things. I feel like if you don't like, it's one thing to enjoy being a pillow princess. It's another to just dislike giving head. I feel like if you don't know how to do something, then you won't like it. Also, you might be sucking the wrong dick because when you sucking the right dick, you like it. Right. Definitely. Even if you don't do it all the time, you don't dislike it. If you suck at somebody dick and you don't like it, girl, right. please, you, need re uh, you need to rethink the whole situation. Girl, let the whole thing go. That, that's not right. Yeah. I also think women that, that feel that way, what hangups are you coming to sex with? That's what I'd be thinking about. Like, this must have come from somewhere, right? So what, so what hanging are past. you doing? Well, like, where are you bringing this from? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I just don't like sucking dick. Like, why? It must come from why? somewhere. <laughs> like, I can't get it. I don't get it. Because I, like, I agree with you. I found like, the enjoyment in it. That's why I said you just haven't got the reaction. Y'all feeling each other and y'all get, like, that's that's what it is. And, and the chemistry is good and y'all in the same wavelength. Then you're going to want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, you're going to want You're not just going to want to do it. You're going to want to do it and bring him to his knees. Mm -hmm. You know? So, um, so, yeah. So, I feel like we need to... um. We need to get the classes. <laughs> Wait, it's winter. Y'all all listening. Don't have nothing else to do. We're all online. Um, so sign up for the Zoom classes. Sign up for the Patreon. Where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Sexual Essentials. At Sexual Essentials with an S. Um, and if you click, click the link in my bio, um, all my links are there. You know, look around in the highlights, all that. And my website is www.sexualessentials1.com. So. I am going to put a link on my website so they can find me there when this podcast episode comes out uh comes out um you guys will have links to her and find everything and then i will let you know what class i'm gonna be in so i could be in the back of the room okay, everybody's name is there i'm like if you're there let me know afterwards because i'm i'm gonna act a fool the whole That's time okay. i'm gonna be in the back of the room you know sipping my henny while i'm playing with my toy that you sent me but i will be there i will be there um so that we could do this together because i think it'll be so much fun and i think that is anything that you learn just makes you better right Absolutely. We, and can I all, we, we can all be better it's a level of cockiness that you get when you put something in that that tool belt, you know. I, I learned how to do this. Let me put that in my little. And fellas, please do not think because there's two women talking that y'all don't need to take a class or two. Get get over yourself. I would rather you know everything and can teach that class to somebody else than you're just sitting around thinking that you know. Yeah. Right? 
men, you can take the masturbation squirting class so you can learn how to do that to her as well. Yeah. So that's so another fun. class for another day. <laughs> thank you so much sexual essentials thank for you so much Carrie. so much fun i um appreciate you and i can't wait uh to work with you again Hold all right you, 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 you know already who's in this in this live, live. 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 The party ain't over. on the say it loud radio show Thank you so much, uh, Sexual Essentials, for sitting in the hot seat and joining me on another episode of Say It Loud. I will be at her classes on the 4th and the 5th of February. Yes, I'm taking a dick riding class and the squirting class in the dick sucking class because, you know, I got all these toys in the house. Might as well have a good time with it. Um, so if you want to join us, definitely go check out her website Um you can follow her on my Instagram. I have her on there. And um, I'll see you guys all there. This is now time for our Dropping Gems segment brought to you by our official Manscaped sponsors. Uh, we love Manscaped and we love it when you're escaped, man. Um, so just on this Dropping gem section, I really just wanted to tell all of you, both male and female, uh, that you really need to just embody and embrace your sexy. You know, you need to just embrace it no matter what size you are or whatever your hangups are about your body or what you think or what you don't think um, or whatever you're not 110 percent confident about. Let me tell you something. You know, what's, you know, what's sexy confidence. Confidence is sexy. No matter what you think that that's supposed to look like, confidence is sexy. So whatever the fuck you're wearing, however the fuck you carry it, whatever your scars are, your this is, your that is, like walk in your truth and slay that bitch. You know what I mean? And that goes for you guys. That goes for you ladies. That goes for you new mommies, you daddies. However, whatever it is, like own that bitch and just be sexy in it and feel good in it because you're allowed to do that. You're entitled to do that. That's one. Two, after talking to Sexual Essentials and signing up for her classes, I really felt like it was important to also understand that nobody knows everything, right? We could have, we could be like, I'm grown and I've been having sex for years and I don't know how to do this. I never tried that. This might be fun. Like, don't limit yourself thinking that you know everything or being insecure about signing up to learn something else, right? I think the smartest, pe the smartest thing I've ever learned was that I don't know everything. That was the smartest thing I ever learned. I became an educator and I learned that I didn't know shit, right? And when you walk through life understanding that, you're going to be a lot happier with yourself because you're going to be like, no, I don't know, but teach me, right? And so, you know, you might be great at one thing, but now you're going to go learn something else. You might know how to do this, but you don't know how to do that, right? And so this is an opportunity for you to come out that comfort space because the problem is when you think you know everything, that's when you don't. Right. And that's where you might be faltering in an area. So we can all have good, better, best. Right. There's a lot of men out there saying, well, I, I don't need to do that because I know already. No, you can still stand to learn. And there's a lot of women being like, well, what else can you learn? You can still you can still land a space to learn more about yourself, about your body, about your partner, about other people and their energies and kind of just taking that and and seeing how it can come into your life and affect you and just be, you know, a better you because you have that experience or a conversation or saw something or took it or was able to implement it somewhere into your life you know and it can it can be something so simple as like yo when I had my kids I felt like this you know when I'm with my partner I felt like that I've always been shy about this I've so just using those opportunities to grow as a person and then using that growth to be able to enjoy it with your partner so I really wanted to bring that to you um please join us each and every Friday for a new episode of Say It Loud. Like my kids would say, Say It Loud, y'all. Um, shout out to all of our sponsors. I had to start getting every all of these commercials in here. So we're going to be recording commercials. Don't get mad. Um, so shout out to Sweet Vibrations. Please make sure you go check them out. Use my code louder, L-O-U-D-E-R, 
for 10% off. I love all of their products. So hit me up if you want to know which one I think you should use. Big, big, big shout out to She Orgasms. Uh, she is coming on the show. I take my vitamins and supplements. I love them very much. Uh, make sure you check her out. You can also go to my link in my uh, on my website or on my Instagram to get to her. Manscaped, as you know, I love them. Make sure you use my code LOUD for 20% off and free shipping. I told you y'all I got y'all I bring you nothing but the best of the best taste vitamin also on my website we're going to have them on the show they'll talk to you more about what the vitamins do so there's so many wonderful things make sure you're following me on IG Instagram Twitter Facebook all that great stuff we are now moving to YouTube that's right you can actually see a visual of me just sitting here talking to you I don't know if that if that's what you want um so yeah go to I am Karen L Instagram page Saith production um channel i am karen channel i am karen l channel safe productions channel and safe loud podcast all of that is on youtube we uh have the capability now to go live on youtube as well as facebook so you can join us also on our facebook page um there and uh yeah we got a lot of good stuff coming for season three so shout out to all my guests so far i love every single one of you shout out to sexual essentials all of our sponsors and all of you listeners i live in a place of gratitude and i can't do what i do if y'all not listening so do me a favor do me a solid yo make sure you tag all your friends tell your best friend your girlfriend your auntie your cousin the landlord the bellman the amazon guy all that good shit let's get these numbers up hit the website buy some merch make a donation uh join our subscription and say it motherfucking loud y'all i'll see you next week hit me yeah please be clear we are popping it off flex your fingers flex your fingers and type up www.saidloud.com now and stay in tune with everything karen l is on the world wide web how did i bring my dreams alive why with a anchor podcast of course if you haven't heard about anchor it's the easiest way to make a podcast let me explain it's free there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor does the hard work and distributes your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money with your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to Anchor FM to get started.